Longleaf pine ecosystems provide important habitat for reptiles in the southeastern U.S. Over 50 species of reptiles are associated with longleaf pine and the embedded seasonal wetlands, with some listed as endangered or threatened, and many almost exclusively dependent on well-managed longleaf pine woodlands. The Herpetology Lab at the Jones Center works to further conservation of these species by studying their life history and ecology with a focus on questions related to habitat management and restoration. Let's look at a few of these longleaf pine specialists. Well, the longleaf ecosystem, we believe that it was more of a pine grassland or pine savanna. Fire plays a really important role in maintaining the longleaf pine forest and the structure that you see here. It creates um, and maintains an open understory with lots of herbaceous vegetation. That's food for gopher tortoises. It's cover for things like snakes. The whole forest structure changes if you don't have fire. It, it'll just grow up into an oak thicket. You lose the ground cover um, and you lose the diversity. You don't have that, that habitat structure that all these different animals need. We are checking tomahawk live traps to catch tortoises. So we set up the live trap, which just means that there's a pressure plate at the back that the tortoise has depressed and closed this front door right here, um, trapping him inside. Um, and we check the traps twice a day just because it gets pretty hot. Um, so we'll check them around nine o'clock in the morning and about three o'clock in the afternoon. Um, and then we'll bring them back to the lab and process them. And take some measurements um, of like the tortoises. Length, width, weight, and things like that. And then each tortoise gets a specific ID number to indicate that we've caught the tortoise before. Their burrows are also used by over 360 other species, including mammals, reptiles, amphibians, namely the gopher frog um, uses these burrows a lot. They're really important, disproportionately important to the to the habitat. Yeah, a lot of insect species use the burrows as well. This is a Florida pine snake. This habitat that you see around us is really um, ideal for a snake like this. Um, this species really needs that open canopy pine forest. This is a snake that is a longleaf pine specialist. And since longleaf pine um, is in decline and there's less than 5% of the habitat remaining. That means that the snake is, is actually in decline as well, along with the habitat. So it's a, it's a fairly uh, uncommon snake in a lot of places where it once was common, but has, it's tied very closely to fire. If, they, if you burn this habitat um, regularly, you're more likely to create the kind of habitat that pine snakes really need. This is our Eastern Cochwip. It is one of our native snakes here in the Longleaf Piney ecosystem. It's one of the largest snakes that we have here um, in the Longleaf Pine ecosystem. Our record on Ichiway, I think, was seven foot six inches, so this gets to be a pretty sizable snake. They have really, really large home ranges. They travel pretty large distances, um, and they're unusual uh, compared to other snake species in that they're active foragers. So most snakes will sit and wait for prey to come by, but Coach whips are different in the fact that they will actively hunt down their prey. So they'll do a periscope action where they'll lift their heads off the ground. And they'll look for prey and they'll key in on it and they are fast enough to hunt down even a really, really fast race runner lizard. Um, so I think these guys are pretty remarkable. Um, they're considered open pine specialists. So this is really great habitat that you see here for coach whips. They like this open pine canopy, um, the grassy understory. It needs to be fairly open because they are foragers and they need to actually visually cue in on their prey. So having this open, uh, recently burned habitat is really great for an eastern coach whip. 